Um, but good afternoon. My name is Sophie Hollis. I am the Community Engagement Librarian at NC Live, um, and I'm here today with Claire Leverett, our Interim Executive Director, and Devin Waugh, our Instruction Librarian. And the three of us are going to be telling you about some of the great content, software, and services that NC Live can offer your library. So our goals for today are first to reintroduce you to NC Live, or maybe for some folks, this is the first introduction you're getting, and that's great. Um, but we just kind of want to give you an overview of all the things that we can offer your library and all of the great things that we do. Um, and then this is also a great chance for us to get to hear from y'all. So um, we'd love to hear from you in the chat if you have any questions. We're going to have some time at the end also to ask questions and answer questions. Um, so please participate as much as you want to. Um, we love learning things about our member libraries and librarians. So um, yeah, please, please participate. Um, so first, we're going to start out with a fun little interactive audience poll. Um, so I'll be launching this here. Um, but this is just kind of to gauge who's in the room today. Um, so it's how long have you lived in North Carolina? See some answers trickling in here. All right, I'm going to call it. Looks like we've got a good mixture here, and I'll share these results. Um, some people are brand new. Welcome to the state. Um, it's great to see some new faces. Um, some people have been here for a little bit of time, and a few people have been here for their whole life. So that's great to see. Um, so that's awesome. That gives us a sense of who's here and um, how familiar you might be with NC Live if you've been in North Carolina libraries for a long time. Um, so we love to hear from you. Thanks for participating. And with that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to our Interim Executive Director, Claire Leverett. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, I'm just going to give some background information about NC Live, and then I will hand it back off to Sophie and Devin. So North NC Live is North Carolina's statewide library cooperative since 1997, so we're 27 years old. And we're made up of 209 member libraries, and we serve four different library types. And although we serve four library types throughout the state, we are hosted actually by NC State University in Raleigh. So that's where our offices are located. And we're a public-private partnership in that we receive both state funds and private funds from the North Carolina independent colleges and universities. So you can see here the number of libraries in the different communities. We have a variety of library types represented, public and academic libraries, and from large research institutions to small public and academic libraries. So we have a, a great diversity of library types and institutions in NC Live. But at NC Live, all institutions get the same content, software, and services. So that's why we have such great buying power because all four communities are working together to make sure all of our resources benefit each library type. This is our mission, NC Live helps member libraries to better support education, enhance economic development, and improve the quality of life for all North Carolinians. So we continue to look for ways to serve North Carolinians and libraries based on this. And because NC Live is statewide and includes public libraries, all North Carolinians have access to NC Live resources. NC Live is a great equalizer of information across the state in this way because anyone can go to their public library and get a library card to access the same content that is used at the college and university libraries in, in the state. And it also provides great continuity of access across a person's life. Once a student graduates from that, their academic institution, if they live in the state, they can continue to access many of those same resources that they had at school for the rest of their lives or if they're at a community college and move to a four-year institution, they're already familiar with all the resources because they've had them at their community college library and in sometimes have accessed them at their public library. So it can make the transition a lot easier. And we know that NC Live is very valuable for libraries and for users across the state. And that's why it's so important that we continue to hear from all of our libraries about what NC Live can do to help continue this mission and support libraries. This is our current team, um, and there have been a few changes lately. We've uh, just added a new admin assistant, Julie Klein, and we're very excited to have her. She helps the entire team and supports NC Live activities. 
Uh, specifically, she does a lot to support event planning, catering, and meeting logistics. And the other change is that I have started as interim in the interim executive director role as our previous executive director just left to move to a new job in Ohio. Um, and just a little bit of background about myself, I've been working at NC Live for eight years as associate director. And in this role, I manage all the internal operations of NC Live, such as the website, usage statistics, hosted proxy, and all of NC Live's e-resource management. And I also work with Devin Waugh and the training and professional development program and with the resource advisory committee on selecting resources. So I enjoy doing all of this work and I'm also excited for this opportunity to serve as interim executive director and get to know you all more and serve you in this new capacity. So now onto some information about how NC Live is governed. We are a membership organization, so it's important to have input and participation from all of our member libraries to make sure we're supporting you and serving you in the way that you need us to. So these committees are one way that we hear from you. Um, there are four different committees, the Continuing Education and Training Advisory Committee, the Outreach, Promotions and Partnerships Advisory Committee, the Resource Advisory Committee, and the Website Advisory Committee, which actually just got renamed to the Online Services Advisory Committee. So these four committees help guide the direction of NC Live by serving as representation for our four communities of interest, which are the um, four different types of libraries that we showed a few slides ago. So the, there are three members from each community of interest on each committee. And that's how we provide equal representation across our, um, our membership. So if you have comments about what NC Live is doing or you have feedback, we wanna hear from you. And one of the ways you can reach us, you can reach out to your representatives on these advisory committees, or you can always contact the NC Live team um, through, through our help email as well. And we'll have that information on the at the end of the presentation. But the um, advisory committees and all the different representatives on the advisory committees are actually on our website as well under the about section. So you can get to their contact information at any, any time. Uh, and the other purpose of this slide is just as a recruiting slide. So if you're interested in serving on one of these committees, we'd love to have you participate. And your executive council representative is responsible for nominating the members to the committee. So you can contact them directly. Um, and the executive council is, is our main governing board. Um, they're Contact information is also on our website in that same place, or you can always contact us at, at the NC Live staff since um, we can help facilitate that connection and we keep a list of people who are interested. All right, so onto our funding. This is um, our budget in 1997, and now we'll move to our budget in 2024. And um, you can see that our budget has increased slightly from 3.2 to 4.3 million. You can see the breakdown here of what we spend on content versus what we spend on operations. And there was a small increase in state funding uh, in 2004, 2005, in, but it's now been 20 years without additional funding. We purchase our resources every three years, but as you can imagine with inflation, um, each, time we purchase our resources, it gets harder and harder to maintain our resources with our flat budget. So that's one of the things we're working on right now is trying to get an increase in funding. And this um, infographic is us trying to demonstrate the, how the impact that inflation has had on our buying power. Um, like I said, we're, we're working hard to increase our funding across all of our communities of interest um, because it is essential to maintaining our resources and, and services after such a long period without additional funding and with the rate of inflation. And we wanna make sure to maintain the access to all the resources we currently have and, and also have the opportunity to purchase even more resources to try to take advantage of that excellent buying power we have um, since we're all working together across the state and um, thinking about other things we might be able to buy that, that would benefit all of us. 
And we know that as libraries, we, we understand the value of NC Live. And so we're working hard to communicate that value to the other stakeholders um, in the state, such as funders, so they know how important it is that we get that additional funding to keep buying the resources that everyone depends on. All right, so I will now hand it over to Sophie. Thanks, Claire. Um, yeah, so um, Claire really gave a great overview there of how we work internally, how we decide to buy things, how we decide on um, the services that we offer, and how we're powered by that funding. Um, but I wanted to give a little bit of insight here into that whole run of things that NC Live can offer our member libraries. So what most people know us for right away is our content. And as Claire mentioned, um, we really like to think of ourselves as an equalizer across the state, um, as a real equity focused organization, because um, as Claire mentioned, we do provide the same resources to all of our member libraries. So in a little bit of a cliche metaphor, um, we like to think of ourselves as sort of a rising tide that lifts all boats um, because we really are supporting all of our member libraries with the same stuff and the same services. So when I talk about stuff or when I talk about content, um, what I'm referring to is the 1.8 billion things that we have in our online collections. So that includes things like online articles, streaming videos, eBooks, and you know, digital newspapers, all kinds of the great digital resources that you access through your library. Um, so we do have like a really great large collection that we can provide to all of our libraries. And the reason that we're able to provide so much stuff is because we do buy collectively across our 209 member libraries. Um, so you can see here, we have a little bit of a, of a graph to show you. Um, our budget that we spend on resources, as Claire mentioned, is about $3.6 Um, And what we do at the end of every year is we go to our vendors and ask if all of our member libraries purchased this collection um, on their own, how much would that cost? And the most recent figure that they've given us is $51.5 million. So um, this gives you an idea of how powerful it is when we work collaboratively and we can buy these per or purchase these resources together. Um, how much money that's really saving across the state. And in case you'd like a different visual for that, um, here's the difference in a bar graph. Um, so you can see the difference of what we pay for all this content um, collectively through NC Live versus what it would cost all of our member libraries if it was purchased individually. Um, so we're saving the state almost $48 million um, in 2023, and that's pretty consistent each year. So or pretty big um, money saver for the whole state. So now switching gears a little bit away from content, um, some of you may know that NC Live also offers like this whole host of software and services um, that we're really proud of. So the way that we determine what we offer our member libraries kind of starts in this thought process of what a library patron is going through um, when they're looking for information. So. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with this as information professionals, um, but when we're thinking about a library patron and their journey to find reliable information, they're probably going to run into a lot of these pitfalls. Um, so often they'll find paywalls between them and trustworthy information. Um, they may find misinformation, especially if they're looking online. Um, and they can also you know, get distracted, get ads, all kinds of things in this online space. Um, I guess when I ask this in in-person workshops, almost everyone says that patrons start their search in Google. Um, and that's kind of what we're trying to think about is if we have a patron searching for information, like what are they going to run into? So based on that, um, one of the first services that we offer is our search engine marketing. Um, and essentially, <laughs> this is probably not a surprise, um, because so few information seekers begin their search at a library, we're trying to catch as many of those people as possible and bring them to a library so they can get that good information. Um, so something that we do is we actually put ads on Google for relevant resources, depending on what people are searching for, to direct them to their library and make sure that they can get access to that good information. So I think I have an example here, yes. Um, so just imagine um, somebody's looking for you know, genealogy resources or ancestry resources. Um, this is something we hear from public libraries a lot. Um, so when somebody Googles that they're looking for that, you can see this is an example of an ad that pops up 
and this will direct them to their library. Um, and we also have this great infrastructure that allows people to sign up for a 10 day pass where they can just instantly get access. And then after 10 days, we direct them to their nearest public library using their zip code so they can sign up for a permanent library card and permanent access. Um, so that's one of the ways that we try to catch the general public and direct them into our member libraries. And like I said, um, really the goal of this program is to try to create new library patrons and direct people to begin their search at the library the next time they have a question. We're trying to meet them where they are, essentially. So in a similar vein, another service that we offer is our website service. So when you think about all of the websites out in the world today, um, you're probably thinking about the really big and, and super functional ones like Amazon, um, YouTube, Facebook, things that um, feel so intuitive now because they've been around. And so that's kind of the expectation for most people when they're online is they want a website that is easy to use, that makes a lot of sense. Um, it doesn't take a lot of clicks to get where they wanna go. And so what we offer is this template that's using LibGuides, which is um, a platform that's available to our member libraries. And our web development and database librarian has designed this excellent um, template that you can just overlay and then personalize to your library. So I think I have some images here to give you a sense of what this looks like. Um, so this is sort of a generic one. <laughs> Obviously, we don't serve name of college university. Um, but this will kind of gives you a sense of what we prioritize. So we have the search box here right at the top to make sure that people um, can just put in what they're looking for right there, just like Google. You can see that we have this standard menu bar here where you can list your library services and resources and events. Um, we also typically put the hours right at the top. So this is all based on best practices that we've seen across our member libraries really helps streamline that information finding process. So here's an example. This is from Surrey Community College, which is one of our member libraries. Um, but you can see here on the left, the before side is sort of standard libguide with those boxes. That's probably what most of you are familiar with. Um, and then on the right is a after image, which shows you that search focused, um, like much cleaner, much more streamlined version. And that's what our template looks like. So another service that we have, a little bit related to this, um, is Hosted Proxy. Um, so as you all, again, probably know, library users don't always want to come into the physical library to access resources. Um, lots of people want to stay at home and, and do research. Um, and then lots of people, you know, actually may have trouble leaving their home or getting places. Um, so we like to make sure that our resources are maximally accessible to everybody. So this hosted proxy is a service that we offer for free where we manage your offline access essentially. Um, and so this, may, this way users can log in from wherever they are, put in their library card number and instantly get access from wherever they are. And finally, um, our discovery service, um, we use ProQuest Summon but this is what makes it a little bit more like a Google experience for users where they can type in whatever they want um, into that search bar and it will generate search results. Um, so we offer this discovery service to our member libraries because we know that part of the process is really important. Um, so if that's something that your library is interested in, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, our help desk would be a great contact and we'll have that information at the end. And same for hosted proxy. And I know that was a ton of information um, and we have even more here on this list. Um, and most of these things here um, we're about to go through in a little bit more detail, but I have this slide here just to say that NC Live offers so many things to our member libraries, um, but we're also always open to hearing from you all. So if there's something that your library needs um, or a program of ours that you really like, um, we love hearing that feedback from you. So please make sure that you are talking to us and giving us feedback. Um, so that we can serve you the best way that we can. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over um, to our instruction librarian, Devin, who's gonna talk about our training program. Great, thanks, Sophie. So we do have a training program that I manage that includes training on NC Live resources, um, as well as key topics in librarianship. So we have short training, like our crash course resource tutorials, 
um, which right now are being migrated to a new system this fall. Um, but we also have short videos, our crash courses on resources like ProQuest Central, our homegrown collection on our YouTube channel, as well as full recorded webinars on our YouTube channel. Um, a lot of that video content is also available through Niche Academy, through um, the State Library subscription. So um, that is something that's also available if your library has access to Niche Academy. Um, we do have self-paced courses as well. So we have the NC Live orientation course, um, which was created two years ago as a way to kind of offer a one-stop shop for being introduced to NC Live, um, what we offer our committees, as well as our resources. Um, and another really great place to find out about live training is our training calendar. Um, so we offer a variety of webinars and in-person workshops. Um, with our webinars, we host them, but we also have several partner consortia around the country that we kind of cross promote their webinars and put them on our training calendar as well. So if you see something on our calendar that says, this is brought to you by the Professional Development Alliance, that could be a webinar hosted by Library Link New Jersey or Carly in Illinois. Um, and you're welcome to register for all of those webinars. They're free, just like all of the training that we offer. Um, we also have in-person workshops that are on our training calendar. So we have one coming up next month on marketing that will be held at Chapel Hill Public Library. And we have a resource workshop um, happening at Forsyth County Public Library in downtown Winston-Salem in October. Um, and with that, we like to make sure that with our in-person workshops, um, we were actually talking to our new admin assistant this week about them, and she said, oh, they're like an NC Live party. And in a way, they are. We want to make sure that people have the ability to connect across libraries, have fun. We have raffles um, and really be able to deepen knowledge of resources or topics in librarianship. And then we also on our YouTube channel just wanted to highlight some of the recorded trainings. So we have a mix of NC Live resource webinars, like this Advanced Readers Advisory webinar that I co-hosted with Julie Rayner from High Point Public Library in January. But we also host a lot of panel discussions, presentations. Uh, this one on the left is the Librarian's Guide to Licensing, um, and that's Tessa Minchu from NC State. Um, and she led that with a few librarians from Duke as well on e-resources licensing. So we try to cover a lot of different topics and we really rely on survey feedback from our member libraries on what to cover. So if there's a topic that you'd like to see a webinar on, feel free to send those in feedback surveys like the one that you'll receive for this webinar or email me or help at nclive.org. We really appreciate that feedback. And then, as I mentioned, we have these crash course videos, which are bite-sized training on our YouTube channel. In the description of those videos, I always include links to supplemental materials, as well as an infographic that you see on the right here that includes some things to know about the resource and then some search challenges. Um, just trying to give you that intro, that primer on a particular resource um, like Social Explorer here. And in May, we launched the Business and Market Research course. Um, this offers self-paced um, practice um, as well as scenarios from actual patron questions around North Carolina. We highlight a lot of the different uh, a lot of the different business resources that we have through NC Live, um, but specifically data axle reference solutions, the ABI informed collection through ProQuest and Social Explorer. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about how to support local businesses or entrepreneurs in your community using these resources, that's something to check out. And we have a little check for comprehension. So let's launch this poll here. Oh, okay. Um, so our question is, which of these is not an NC Live community of interest?
Oh, let me see here. Sophie, are you able to switch over that poll? Sorry, it says it is being shared. Can y'all see it? Let me try again. Maybe I'm missing something. Hmm. Can y'all see it on your screens, the, the poll? I'm not seeing it either. Hmm. Let me try. Let's try this one. How about now? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. All right, so you should see that poll now and feel free to submit a response. All right, I think we've got a good number of responses here. Let's see how y'all did. Can everyone see these? So it looks like most people got this one right. Um, K-12 schools are not one of our communities of interest. Um, our four communities of interest are the community colleges, the UNC schools, the public libraries, and the private colleges and universities. Um, and, you know, teachers and we love teachers and supporting them and, and they can still access these resources um, and use them in their school libraries as a citizen with a library card um, because they can get it through their public library. Um, additionally, many of our school libraries um, use NC Cardinal and that can give you access. Um, so we do work with school libraries occasionally, but they're not one of the communities that um, we buy for. So a little bit of a tricky question. All right. So I just wanted to wrap up with a few more um, projects that we have going on that might be interest interesting to some of y'all. Um, so the first program that I have listed here is our Maximize Your NC Live e-resources program. And essentially what this is, is almost like a mini consulting appointment with us. Um, but basically all you have to do on the library side is register to participate in the program and fill out a survey that tells us a little bit about your library. Um, so those are pretty straightforward questions. It's like, how do you share e-resources within your library? Um, what ILS do you use? Um, very basic questions. And you can answer as many as you want. Um, none of them are required. And then we take a look at that survey and we put together a custom individual report for your library and make recommendations about how you could increase your resource usage. Um, and those are really great for us because we get these one-on-one -on -one meetings with y'all and get to know more about your individual libraries and hear some feedback about um, any challenges or successes you've had in promoting particular resources. And we also like that that gives you a chance um, to meet with us one-on-one, -on -one, um, get to know a little bit more about NC Live. And um, many of these recommendations are also from other of our member libraries who have shared success stories. Um, so it's nice to hear what your peers are doing successfully and what's working for them. So if you're interested in this program, um, again, it's very easy on the library side. Um, all you have to do is sign up at nclive.org slash maximize. Another recent update that we have is our promotional materials page has been updated. So um, now under the four librarians tab on nclive.org, you can click um, promotional materials under engage and promote, and you'll be taken to this page. And basically what this is, is a repository of all these free marketing materials that you can download, print yourself, post on your social media, put on your website completely for free. Um, so we try to encompass most of our resources with these materials. These are things that we make and share. Um, and then there's also things from our vendors on here as well. Um, so it's a little bit cut off on this picture, but you can see like this one at the bottom here is transparent language. Um, so we also compile a lot of our vendor materials onto this page all in one place for you to find easily. Um, and this featured materials page is just the featured ones, but you can see on the menu here on the left side, you can also filter by what you're looking for. So hopefully um, that will help you find if you're looking for you know, printable flyers, for example, you can narrow it down and find just those kinds of materials. And then similarly, um, as we've migrated all of these materials onto our website, um, we've also rebooted our um, print materials program. So the way that this works is it's a little bit like online shopping, which is 
pretty fun in my opinion. Um, but you can filter by vendor here and select materials that you want printed for you by our vendors. And then our vendors will ship them to you in the mail for free. Um, so you can see here at the top, some popular ones with um, the Cinehall poster, the Consumer Reports bookmarks. Um, so these are all things that you can actually download and print yourself at any time if you want to do that. But you can also add them to your cart, place a print materials order, and then our vendors will ship those to your library for free. And the advantage of that is just that they come on sort of high quality paper. They're already cut to the right size and everything. So if you don't have a ton of time to do marketing or print materials, this is a great way to get it done in just a few seconds, very easily and completely for free. And then one more project that I have here is our alumni access project. Um, this one is specifically for our academic libraries, but if you're a public library, um, you're also impacted by this because that's where we're sending everybody. So um, if you're an academic library, chances are your students um, know that they can come to your library to do academic research while they're a student, but they might not realize that they can continue their access after they graduate through their public library. Um, so what we do is we set up this portal that you can put on your website or send out to your alumni lists and say, you know, congratulations on graduating or getting a job. Um, as a benefit of being an alumni of our institution, you actually get continued access to our library's resources. Um, this signs them up for instant 10 day access, as I mentioned with the um, SEM ads, it's the same infrastructure. And then basically this will direct them to their nearest public library after 10 days for permanent access. Um, so if you're an academic institution, you're interested in this, please reach out to me. Um, you can either reach out to me, uh, my email is sophie at nclive.org, or you can reach out to our help desk, which should be right here. Perfect, perfect timing. Um, so as we mentioned, all of our services, um, if you're interested in any of them, even if you're just interested in learning more about them and not sure that if you're ready to sign up, please reach out to our help desk. The best way to reach us is that email there at the bottom that says help at nclive.org. You can also call us, um, but email tends to kind of be the best and fastest way to reach us. And that really is one of us answering your, your emails. So um, this is like a very direct way to get to any of us. And then if you're interested in seeing what else we have going on, um, we have our social media accounts available here that you can follow. And then we also have this great selection of listservs. And that's a great way to find out more about what trainings and events are coming up. If you wanna come to, as Devin said, an NC Live party, <laughs> which is really a, a deeply educational and valuable learning experience, um, at a public library to network with um, people around you um, from other libraries, that's a great way to find out when those are happening. So go to that listserv um, page and sign up for training updates and you'll hear from us about what kinds of events are coming up. And I think that's all we have today. And so I'll go ahead and open the floor for questions.